So I meant to review this movie for Valentine's Day, missed that deadline, but better late than never, let's talk about it. So My Bloody Valentine 3D is a remake of the early 1980s movie My Bloody Valentine. I'll actually talk about that movie a little bit at the end of this video. So this movie takes place 10 years after a coal mining incident happened where five people died and one person was left in a coma. A year later, Harry Warden, the guy in a coma, wakes up, kills 22 people. Jump forward 10 years, this movie starts. And the guy responsible for the accident that killed the five people returns to the community and at the same time, someone dressed like Harry Warden starts killing people again. They gotta find out who the killer is, who's responsible for everything happening, and not die. So this movie is the very first R-rated film to use real 3D technology. That's what modern 3D stuff is. And it came out actually before Avatar. It's one of the movies that kind of like was at the front end of the current phase of 3D movies. And for my money, I had a lot of fun when I first saw this movie in the theater and I had a lot of fun re-watching it this past week. As a slasher movie, it gave me everything that I wanted. Before I get started, I wanted to let you know this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. One of my supporters over there who also comments a lot on Twitter in the comment section here, Kelly Marie Farrell, she requested that I watch and review the My Bloody Valentine movies. And so here we are doing that. If you don't know what Patreon, it's kind of like the Sean Chandler fan club and you can support my channel over there directly financially and for that you get some kind of exclusive videos, access into kind of requesting some videos like this one right here. I also do a live feed, a uh, live stream most Sundays at 3 central time. Please consider supporting me over on Patreon. This video in particular is brought to you by Kelly Marie Farrell. Thank you so much for your support and now I'm going to talk about the movie you requested. Let's get started talking about the good. Now what I loved about this movie is that it was an 80s throwback slasher film except with modern aesthetics and it came out at a time when the Saw movies were king, there was torture porn ripoff franchises, haunted house movies were making a comeback, demon possession movies were making a comeback, and then you have My Bloody Valentine 3D about a guy in a mask killing people with a pickaxe. And that's when it comes to horror movies, that's what I like. I like horror movies where people are being killed by a deranged serial killer guy with a cool weapon where you just get some good kills in there. And that's what this movie delivers. The other thing I loved about this movie is that it's schlocky 3D. For, for my money, this is the best use of 3D besides maybe Avatar. And if you're the sort of person that just hates it when they start doing stuff like this towards the screen and eyeballs popping out at the screen and all that stuff and blood spurts and every other excuse to have something come at the screen, if you hate that, you're not gonna like the 3D in this movie. But for me, 3D's a gimmick. That it's it's supposed to be, whoa, we're the, it's supposed to be that stuff. I want the pickaxe swinging around like this in front of the camera. That's what I want from a 3D movie. It, also, it's got a cast that I enjoy quite a bit. So the lead guy is Jensen Ackles from uh, Supernatural. I actually know him from Smallville from before that. And so, he, you know, of course, he's in very solid in a lead role. He's been doing Supernatural a long time. So, of course, you know, he can carry a type of movie like this. He's a very strong actor for uh, a slasher franchise. And then Jamie King is is the kind of lead girl in it. She was in a movie called uh, The Bulletproof Monk and I enjoyed her in that and she's very good in this one as well. You also got some older actors in it like the lead guy from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. He's the, the police officer in the movie. You had Kevin Teague who was John Locke's dad on Lost is in it. So it's actually got a pretty good cast and like some of these side roles you wouldn't think that they'd get a good actor for. There's these really solid character actors from the last 30 years in this movie kind of filling things out. Also, as a, it's just kind of a slasher film, it adds several extra dimensions to it in that there's parts to it that there's people that are kind of mentally unstable kind of going on and you don't, you don't know if you can trust them or if they're reliable sources. We don't know who the killer is. We don't know. And so there's a lot of back and forth. Is it you? Is it you uh, kind of doing that? It's not like Scream at all, but a little bit like how Scream has that Scooby-Doo feel of who's the killer. You have that in this movie that adds a nice dimension to it because all the way to the end of the movie, you're like, is it that guy or is it that guy? And they keep putting little hints that take you in each different direction. There's a number of great kills in here which just add to the, kind of the, the 3D effects and it just add to, to that quite a bit. So all in all, if you go into a slasher movie, it's got better actors than a lot of slasher films. It's got a little bit more intrigue in the plot in it. It's got this 3D gimmick kind of going on that kind of adds to the ambiance of it. And it gives me what I want out of a 3D movie. And I thoroughly enjoyed it when I saw it in the theater when it first 
first came out and rewatching it, I was like, once again, I was like, yeah, this is this is a solid slasher film at a time when there wasn't a lot of slasher movies coming out. From there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of this movie. The big one that comes to mind is the tone. It's a little bit odd the way the tone plays out in this film because in a certain sense, it's super serious. Like it's not tongue in cheek. Uh, this also at this kind of time period, you had the Jason uh, Friday the 13th remake that was very kind of goofy and had a lot of humor in it and guys, sm you know, smoking bombs and stuff like that. And this one doesn't really have that. And at the same time, there's elements to it that are kind of corny the way it plays out. And there's this whole subplot at a, um, in a hotel with a naked lady that just the way it plays out is so over the top that it seems totally inconsistent with the rest of the movie. Um, and so it, it's all schlocky is a good way to put this movie because it's it gives you a lot of things to entertain you while just kind of throwing it out there where there's 3D gimmicks, the kills being so gory and graphic, this hotel scene with the naked lady. Um, just anything they can throw at the movie that would entertain the audience, they throw it in there. And so I can appreciate that, so it's kind of mixed, but at the same time, it's definitely not consistent in the tone that it's going for in any particular scene. From there, let's get started talking about the bad. And at the end of the day, this is just a slasher movie. It's a movie about a guy in a mask with a pickaxe walking around and <laughs> killing people. Um, and if that's your thing, this movie delivers what you want. If that's not your thing, this isn't going to be the movie that wins you over to the slasher genre. It doesn't transcend things. It's not like there's amazing character development in here where you're like, these are astounding characters with such depth to them and relatability. No, they're characters that are good enough for a slasher film that populate things nicely, that you care a little bit about where things are going on their journey and the details between them, but they're established basically to give you victims for the guy in the coal miners max that can get a pickaxe through their face and so that their eye can pop out right at the screen in 3D. And so for that reason, it's not gonna be a movie for everybody. Another problem with the movie is that it's a remake of the original film and the original film has a lot of ties to Valentine's Day. There's a Valentine's Day party. The Valentine's Day killer is killing people and pulling their hearts out and put them in boxes and sending it to people. And there's all these ties specifically to Valentine's Day in the center of the plot of the movie. Whereas here, it's like an afterthought. It's like they wrote the script and like, yeah, Harry Warden's a cool guy. It's a cool look because he's got the coal miner's mask on and he's got a pickaxe. That'll be perfect. And then they wrote the script, changed things up, moved some pieces around for it and then someone went hey it's called my bloody valentine you gotta work valentine's day into it remember this imagery from the original remember this sorts of idea and then they threw it in last minute so i, I don't like to make criticisms like that generally speaking but this was a little bit odd one where they like they didn't have a good title for the movie they actually made because of some of the changes they made from the original. Lastly, there's some big twists and turns in the third act as you start to reveal who is doing what in the movie. And it felt a little bit like they cheated a few things. There's some scenes in the movie that are designed to be misleading and they're highly misleading. And I don't like, I don't like when movie makers actually lie to the audience with what they portray on screen. So I wasn't too terribly crazy about how some of that played out. But overall, this movie gave me what I wanted out of a slasher film. Uh, people getting killed, schlocky kills, glory kills, very violent. So I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of that. Overall, I would rate this movie as a B, as just a movie. And I would, on the entertainment level, I would give it a 7 out of 10. This is a fun time if you like slasher movies. While not necessarily being great, it's not trying to be the greatest thing ever. It's just trying to be a single. And it is a single and thoroughly enjoyable if you enjoy this type of movie. Now, real quick, I want to talk about the original film. I did watch it in preparation to do this video. Um, I, I hadn't watched it before that. I didn't have background with it. And I, I don't, I just didn't have too many thoughts about it where I had things I was excited about with the 2009 remake. The original one, it was like, okay, this is a slasher film and it provides the things that I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoy in slasher movies, people getting killed, Harry Warden and the minor. That's a cool idea for a killer. Um, but at the same time that uh, it just didn't pop to me as much. The characters in particular, it wasn't like with, where I kind of resonated with Jensen Ackles and Jamie King and then uh, the, kind of the, the sheriff and the, uh, some of the other characters, side characters and the older characters in the newer one. Uh, I didn't resonate with the actors and the characters in the original the way they did with the remake. 
And so I enjoyed it enough, but not enough that I had strong things I wanted to say about it. That's why I don't didn't decide to end up doing a full review of it. Uh, it was good enough. It was enjoyable enough. But if I was going to watch one again, I would watch the remake again over the original. And like I said, it I, I just don't have any history and nostalgia with it. Uh, I didn't. I think the actual title of the movie makes a lot more sense now that I've seen the original. And was like, oh, it ties into they're doing Valentine's Day parties and there's actual death, murder, Valentine's being given out throughout the whole movie and hearts being removed. This makes a lot more sense and then how it ties together with different pieces threaded. Um, I appreciated a lot of that, whereas the remake, I, I was like, I don't, why is this called My Bloody Valentine? This is weird. So anyway, those are my, my kind of quick takes on it um, as to my, my feelings on the original one. How about you guys? Have you seen them? How do you compare, contrast, all that fun stuff? Tell me your thoughts on both of the movies. Do you like the schlocky 3D here or do you get annoyed by that sort of thing and just hate it? Uh, that That's good 3D is when it's stupid and excessive and unnecessary. Tell me down below in the comment section. And remember, this video was brought to you by my supporters over at Patreon, in particular, Kelly Marie Farrell, who requested this particular review. If you enjoy my channel, want to support it, please consider supporting me at that link down below in the description. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button to movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So please join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion about this throwback slasher film from about 10 years ago. And as always, Thank you for watching.